Hello, welcome to Real Magic Review, where I've got some stuff to say based on stuff that you've had to say. Um, lots of comments this week, which I'll be uh, answering in a minute. We will be, actually, before I do that, no one, I'll do that first. We will be talking about Cube Buster, because I reviewed it quite favourably. Craig Petty and Rylan gave it 0%. I didn't actually see the percentage, but didn't like it. Uh, so I'll talk about that and why I disagree. Um, uh, with that and we're going to be talking well i was going to talk about vino passage but there weren't many comments on that because i think it's just a good thing and um didn't create much of a discussion but we'll be talking importantly more about whether there are too many products and different ideas and different comments people have um let me know with that one and of course a little bit on cube buster because we had a couple of comments on that but before I do that, can you please like and subscribe and check out onlinemagic.co. What I thought I'd do, I'll try, I thought I'd show you it, like rather than just play the video I usually play, just very quickly, I'll show you what it looks like when you go in. So I think this is gonna work. So here is what you get, um, the, all the courses, and you get, lo look down here, you get loads of different um, courses, that you, the hundreds of them, car magic switches, uh, that's a different thing that isn't involved. That Martin Simpson one, <laughs> you don't get that. But you get everything else, foundations of card handling, uh, ropes, elastic bands soon, because I'm going to create a course on rubber band magic, which I've been geeking out on. But what I wanted to show you was the live sessions, which you haven't got to go to. Actually, I've got them here. Um, because they're all uploaded. But here you have 150 live sessions already at least an hour long, mostly like over an hour long, um, with every kind of magic, mentalism, again, rope magic, sleight of hand, car magic, self-working stuff, and special guests. And if you look here, you've got the special guests, we'll be repeating all day, oh, Vinny Segu, oh, okay. yeah. uh, just... there's lovely Tom there, who's here, that. Andy Gladwin, um, Danny Goldsmith, Carnell Harbottle, Luch, David Williamson, Steve Reynolds, Andy Gladwin again, all of these people and more coming up. We've got some really exciting things coming up. So that is what you get. And you get hours and hours and hours of stuff, but hours and hours of stuff isn't any good if it isn't any good. Uh, so you have a look, look at the Trustpilot reviews. All that for a tenner a month is ridiculous. So I know I talk about it every time. I've got to because it, without that, there is no this. That is what allows me to keep doing this channel. So straight on to the i'll go do the comments because there's quite a lot of them and then have a chat afterwards let me just I mean, do ask ask any questions here if you would like um if you can't hear me if i'm not sounding good if any of that kind of stuff do let me know so i'll do the ones on um i always, I always get the name on cube buster I'm not a cube person, but I'm tempted just for the thing that cannot be mentioned. It's quite pricey, though, and that's from time. Yeah, and I go back to that thing of there are certain... I understand people that aren't cube magicians, and I made a kind of joke on the, the last one saying if you don't like cube magic, you're wrong. That was completely ironic. I, I'm not saying you're wrong at all. But there are certain uh, tricks that I say. I go, well, I'm not that kind of person, but I can see how that would work. I'm not saying everybody should buy it and do it in any way you know, I can't remember the saying, in any stretch, in any way. Um, in any way, but what I will say is that it's something that works, whether you like Cube Magic or not, you might be doing a show and thought, actually, I'm talking about a thing there, and that would fit in there. So, it's, so I think sometimes it helps to not see ourselves as certain types of magician, even though we kind of know we are, but look at what a show or an act or something may need, and we might see a, a routine in a different way. But there are, you know, I'm not... I'm not a little what I call trinket magic person, you know, little things that, little kind of ornaments and things that people use that just don't suit me. But, you know, maybe one day when I'm doing my bizarre magic show, it will. Um, uh, this is from Tom, he's watching now. Since you're willing to put it such a pivotal point in the show, uh, in presentation, after many decades of performance, it's got to be solid. Um, do need to get a peek, a major look behind the curtain. So, see if that's the year. Um, you got a few people and others on the other from Pimple Wizard. Yeah, of course, and many people are. Right, so that's that. Caleb Q's an interesting one. I think we'll go straight on to Chaos Cube and then go on to the, the stuff we talked about last week. That's going to take a, a meat of the, well, I think so, of the thing. Um, okay, so Chaos Cube I reviewed... Yesterday or day before? We lose track of days, to be honest. 
I've seen this being performed. Uh, it's really good, definitely a good release and good addition to one's repertoire. Um, from Pablo, I can't see because I haven't got my glasses on. Is it, <laughs> from Tom, is there any non-gimmicked cube magic? Yes, there certainly is, Tom. So, if you want non-gimmicked cube magic, you've got Takamizu Sui's uh, The Cube DVD. Now, he has got another one, The Cube 2, I think, or the, but the, the, the one just called The Cube, I uh, don't know a, a lot about the other one, is really worth looking at for the original mix, but even better than that, I would say, sacrilege to a lot of people, is looking at Colin Klaus and Kev G's Refractor Project, Rubik's Cube Magician, uh, .com or .co.uk. But it's just full of stuff. It's just great. And it's loads and loads of non-gimmick stuff. And then the gimmick stuff, you've got Henry Harris and various other people, you know, Greg Wilson that came out of Rubicon. And, and th you know, this was kind of one of the version. This is a version of one of the early uh, gimmicked cube routines, maybe one of the first. So, uh, which was uh, the, the whole, I always forget the name of it. Sorry, uh, it's live and allowed to. Enchanted Cube which was popularized by Daryl and Mike, someone. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and then Pim always, okay, so you tell me I'm wrong, but Keith just turned me off. Yeah, you're not. It, it, I was being silly. I was being flippant and silly. Uh, you're not wrong at all. What I will say people are wrong about is when they say cube magic is rubbish. It's like music. I had a music analogy stroke metaphor the other day, but you know, when someone really loves the type of music, you can't really say the music's rubbish. You can say you don't like it. I'm not saying you do this, but some people go, yeah, out of it, objectively, Cube Magic is terrible. Nobody enjoys watching it. Now, that is wrong because I've got, you know, real world evidence to suggest otherwise. But not liking it and not wanting to do it and not being impressed with it is, of course, totally right. I really like your reviews. It's just a topic that turns me off. I don't like tricks with cubes. They just tell me, yeah, and this is... I really, really do understand that. It's a really niche thing. It's, I like doing Rubik's. I mean, I like Rubik's cubes myself, so it's, it's something that's naturally, you know, going to be something that appeals to me. Craig Petty just gave this 0% uh, of the review show. There definitely seems to be better cube solving tricks out on the market. Well, there certainly is. And when I say I disagree with, with Craig and Ryland, it's not, I'm not saying they're wrong. That's their opinion, which is just as valid as mine, nearly. No, I'm joking. Um, so, and it's, I like it when things are divisive like this. If I were to compare this with other things, I, I, I wouldn't take this out on a gig to use it for some of the reasons that Craig and Ryland talk, talked about, which is, well, it's not, you can't look at the thing afterwards. It's not examinable. Angles are a problem. Uh, angles are a thing. I'm not sure there is much of a problem depending on the context. No, you cannot do it in surrounding. No, you cannot have people looking there. But uh, when people are looking at something there, even if they're not looking, as they were saying, like in the camera, you've got to be careful. The camera's different because camera, you can rewatch it. In the real life, in real, in the real life, in real life, if you're showing something, the discrepancy of something will not be perceived because of what they're looking at. For example, if I'm looking at the face of a mixed cube, my brain will usually say it's mixed without looking for it not being mixed. Now, if you were to really analyze it and go, oh, actually, I see that, then you would see something. But I don't believe that in this routine, unless you're going to repeat it again and again and again, you would really perceive that thing as not being in the state you are presenting it as being in because not because they can't see it is because they can't perceive it it's like looking at a uh, bang on about this a, a cups and balls load if you know it's there and you're going to look at a video you see straight away as a magician i can see that going in there but in in the real world they're not looking at that because they're looking at what their brain is telling them which is it's a mixed cube so i don't think it's as much of a problem would i do it surrounded absolutely not holding it like that would i do it with an audience in front of me on stage absolutely i think you can totally get away with that. Now, the, the point they made about the algorithms is, is a genuine one and is something I think I mentioned where if you're going to do the, the full shuffles and the mixes and all that kind of thing, yes, you're kind of learning algorithms, but... Oh, uh, tell me if I'm still streaming because it's telling me that streaming has stopped, but it's also telling me it's live. So... I don't know what's going on there. Um, 
I'm going to just see if I'm here. Just tell me if it said that I've stopped streaming. Can you write a message and let me know if I'm talking to no one? If I have, if I'm, that's, you know, that's the way it goes. Um, so, what was I saying? Uh, through me, um, they're perceiving about them being... The, oh, yeah, so if you're doing the all the mixes, all things like that, then you are going to have to learn algorithms. But you can just get this out, it's mixed, drop it on your hand, and it's solved at its most basic. Would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to do that at a close-up gig, but would there be a moment on stage where I'd take a, do it and that's part of a bigger thing? Yes. And if you want to do a very simple full shuffle or mix, it's not much of an algorithm to learn. He Alfonso gives you a very, very simple mix there, which isn't like learning a longer full sh shuffle algorithm. So there's the idea of doing something like Refractor where you're going to have to really understand the cube and what it's doing and get your head around remembering loads of things to be able to do it, like solving it, but not just solving it, doing different. That's a whole different thing. And that's something for people who want to get into cube magic. On the other end of the spectrum, you've got someone that wants to get a cube out, do a thing with it, put it back. And I think this is for that. I don't think things like Refractor are going to be for everybody. It's like me. I have certain tricks that I do that are on their own. They're not because I'm into that genre of magic. It's because I like that thing and I'm going to do that thing and then put it away and do something else because it fits me. There is also this idea that we review things based on the difficulty of them. So you could say, well, it's just as difficult to do this than it is to do something else. So why would you do this instead of the other thing? So, for example, looking at Takamiz Yusui's mix, you can do so much with that. So if that's easier than this with all the with the full shuffles, why would you do it? Well, I think, again, it goes to feeling. Are you, do you enjoy doing the trick? It's not about whether it's difficult or not or more difficult than something else, even though it is if they're claiming that it's completely self-working, which a lot of this isn't, and I've said that, and it requires something akin to sleight of hand. But I think that when you're doing a trick with a Rubik's Cube and another trick, it might just feel different and you might really like it, and I really enjoy playing with this and I enjoyed the effect of it. Now, will I do it instead of the other stuff? No. But for those people who think, all right, I want to do something that does that, that, that has that effect, this seems like a, a one version of doing it, and I'll explore whether it's for me or not. And for $25, I think it's kind of maybe worth that explana um, exploration. There was something else on that that I was going to say, and I can't read my own writing. Yeah. Oh, that was it. So this... This, the effect of this is a strong one because when you see it on camera, and I think that social media magic is valid, especially if you're seeing someone that hasn't been dotted, you're just doing the prop, what it's meant to do, and it looks good, and it's looking the way it would if you were a spectator. And it's harder to get away with on camera again because people can sort of, you know, watch it again and again and again. If it looks that good and it does what it says, then this, and you like that effect, then it's an honest trick. And I've shown this to a few people and people have watched the video and said, you're doing mad stuff, that is mad. Now for me looking at it, now I know how it's done, it's completely obvious. But for them, they're seeing something that looks really magical and looks great. And as magicians, it's very hard to unsee that stuff. So I trust the judgment of certain people that have watched it and they said it really, really looks great. So it looks great, it's easy to do. Yes, it may not be preferable to a lot of other stuff. So going back to, is it preferable or not? Well, I don't know, you don't know until you try it. I really enjoyed playing with it. I liked what it enabled me to do. I liked the freedom of it because I didn't have to remember other than the full shuffles, which I know anyway, so I could just play around with it without knowing too much. Yes, the problem of when it, if you mess it up is a big problem, um, but I think if you practice the algorithms on a normal cube and then do it on this cube, you're going to be, you're going to be fine. Um, right, I'm thinking that, and luckily this is recording, so I'm, I'm going to put this up. I'm thinking that I'm offline, so someone tell me if I'm online. I'm just going to uh, just put that there. And that isn't popping up. Uh, online. Um, so I'm wondering whether anybody can actually see or hear me because my internet might have gone down. Hooray! Uh, but that's all right, it's been recorded. So uh, sorry if you're watching live, but uh, yeah, it'll be up afterwards. Going back to 
the stuff we were talking about last time and there were a lot of comments but m to be honest a lot of the comments were things like i really enjoyed it it was great so and that's really important for me to hear but i won't sort of um go into that on this now because it's it's it'll be too long because loads of people think i'm great uh, <laughs> So I've always, no, there, just, I've always appreciated your vulnerability and self-awareness on this channel. Thanks so much for the discussion. I just thought I'd mention that quickly because I think it's important We're in, in a kind of area of performing that is, doesn't really celebrate vulnerability as much, meaning that we've all got to look really, really good at what we do and everybody's got to look cool and great. Vulnerability to me is just accepting the flaws that we all have and talking about them because we're all vulnerable. We all have this, most of us. So I think it, there's not enough of it in magic. I think you get a lot of it in different forms, like stand-up comedians talk about it all the time. So I think that, that that vulnerability is important to talk about, not just because, hey, look at me, I struggle with this thing, just to make us feel a bit human and feel a bit, you know, less, less alone. Uh, wonderful insight, best part of what you teach, your analysis about the inner voice, your motivation, deeper stuff, yeah. Hopefully that's where we're going with a lot of this. Um, you, do, 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 do. That's very lovely about me, but I'm not going to like this. Um, entertaining, informative, thank you for expressing fear of missing out, the guilt, the joy of finding something new in something old. This from Albert Westbrook. Uh, I'll have to show my wife this video the next time she looks at my stuff and thinks I'm crazy. Yeah, you're not crazy. Uh, totally agree, Steve. I'm as old as you are. Uh, this is from Lawrence. And remember ordering from a Tannen catalogue, but now I get 10 emails a day about new tricks. It's very stressful. Now, before I hit the purchase button, I stop and think, will I use it? How will I use it? Do I really need this or is it just fear of missing out? I've also narrowed my interest uh, to cards and coins. It's fun to watch the ads for other things, but avoid purchasing everything I see. I love books and easier to justify the purchase, but I also have 100 years of reading to do to catch up. Anyway, love the talk. I now know I'm not alone in this anxiety. So I think it's important to point out when with this is that it is stressful and people and some people might say well no real stress is working in an emergency room and all that it's a different type of stress and it's a stress that we are all vulnerable to and that is analysis paralysis fear of missing out needing to be part of something needing to be part of a community wanting to talk about other things that people are talking about and that's really not being able to do that sometimes can be stressful can feel alienating as well as can I've got an hour to work on loads of stuff and I'm stressed because I don't know what to work on that that level of of anxiety is very common with people that do what we do, whether it's magic or, or other art forms. So, and I can totally empathize with that. I think having, putting those rules on yourself can be really, really important to go, right, now actually, I'm not, if it doesn't fulfill this criteria, I'm not gonna look at it. No matter how tempted I am, I'm not gonna look at it. And that is something for me at the moment of going, will I perform this at a gig? Is it gonna add more props to my pockets? Not gonna look at it if it does taken out there so that really because I still buy stuff it's not like I get sent all the stuff I like so that I, I have certain criterias which I think are very are very very important in that respect as well um and it's, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's from Robert Ball sometimes getting the latest trick is right in the books you already have on yourself so shelf so true I mean so true. I have been it's phenomenal what I found well exploring rubber band magic, going back to old stuff and going, I, this was kind of presented to me as a new idea. Not that it was sold as a new idea, but, but you know, with bad crediting and on some things you go, oh, I had no idea this was so old. I'm just checking that's not telling me. Um, no, there's someone that, no, I'm not online. Um, great subject, when I first started, money was short. This is Nick the Trick. Uh, I would send my check off to Repro Magic or Repro Magic and then wait a fortnight to receive it. The good thing was that you gave the effects time and effort and mastered as best you could. I'm guilty in these times of not doing that. So most of what I do is the same as I've done for 40 years. Uh, laugh out loud, but I believe they have evolved. Modern day magic is like coffee. It used to be nice a nice treat after a meal, now it's a quick fix and addictive with posh names, uh, etc. And to sell more, they take the old blend, stick some syrup in it and call it new. It's been very, little that seems new in magic, mostly old ideas reinvented. Yeah, I'm not the best at writing, and there's nothing wrong with that writing at all. It makes some kind of sense. It made absolute sense. So, I just want to, one little thing, um, 
about the time it takes to do stuff. Again, going back to rubber band magic, it's incredible how guilty I felt actually working on the things I should be working about and not doing 10 different things and looking at, of actually delving into a, to a certain type of magic that I want to perform, I want to teach, and the guilt of that, because it's joy as well as work, and, and I think we feel that we should be doing so many different things. And because we're not, it, we have this guilt, so we end up doing so many different things. And I think a lot of us have to relearn after the sort of on, onslaught of technology and, and that our, you know, our attention is being, you know, being bid over, literally. Um, we don't know where to look and we don't know where to start. And I think that the, the, the weird guilt of actually focusing on one thing is a real thing for me, which is really odd. Uh, it's always joy to hear you talk. The quality of magic comes out these days seems to be proportional to the quality of the quantity seems to be inversely proportional to the quality of magic. Your intelligent analysis is refreshing. Thank you very much, Rob. Um, I love the rule of seven. I have seven great effects, and before you buy something new, ask yourself which one of the seven uh, will I replace for this. Wacko, I love amazing people with magic trick because I rarely find a sense of wonder myself anymore since I usually have an idea of how the trick works. When I find a trick that amazes me, I'm often inclined to buy it just to find out, of course, and that's a different thing, which, again, you know, we feel as magicians we should know everything. Maybe we don't have to. Uh, maybe it's all right that, you know, we don't know that thing, but it's good that we know loads about this. And I always think about Cardini with, like, the multiplying billiard balls, and even though he did know quite a lot of different magic, to only know that would have been all right because it was stunning and beautiful and wonderful and to know the, the theory around it as well of course is important but he didn't need to know hundreds of different tricks just that one he presented or the few he presented because they were beautiful and the best ever so um okay so we have to separate the stuff that we use that are solid for performance and the stuff that we play with for fun we do but i want to go back again something i forgot to say about chaos cube is that we have to be honest with ourselves, also me as a professional, that a lot of the stuff I buy isn't because I want to perform it in a show. It's because I want to show my mates, or I want to show my girlfriend, or I want to show the kids, or I just want to do it. And that's all right. And I think to, to, to negative review something that a lot of people do because we're not going to perform it at a gig, or it's not good for a gig, or it's not good surrounded, is all right because a lot of the time, like, I've got stuff on my shelves that I'll take off my shelf and just go, have a look at this, and put it back. And there's no one standing in front of me. So it's not all about performance. It's about showing our friends and family and things like that, which I think is just as valid, maybe even sometimes more valid than a professional performance because a lot of us aren't doing those. So I think that, to, you know, if, I, if this was a magic trick, well, it is a magic trick, but if I was to take that and go along, I'm going to do a thing, but you, couldn't, you weren't allowed to see this half of the cone, which you're not actually in the trick, that's fine if there's everybody's over there. And in, in, in an informal situation, we can usually control quite a lot, set things up and, and all that sort of thing. So again, it's not, that's not a reason I would negatively review something uh, unless it was sold as something that you're going to put in your show straight away, which is often the case, of course. Uh, the mystery, the excitement of the chase, the thrill of acquisition, the anticipation, this is great, PR7023. Uh, anticipation of the product arrival, the joy of receiving, the fun of unwrapping, the reward of learning the secret, all feed into the consumer society of these times exist upon. Uh, consumer society these times exist upon. That a hunter-gatherer instinct that can be fulfilled by buying or we think it, uh, only, only momentarily, absolutely. So the idea of, yeah, I think that's so true, that, that fulfilment we crave and we think we're going to get from buying something, I think is is something that we know is not true, but we still fall for it. It's like we think a drink's gonna make us happy or this gonna, and, and we know it isn't, but we still chase that thing because many of us are wired that way, or as humans, maybe we all are. Uh, and this is kind of tapping into that, of course. Um, so one must go on to the next shiny thing. Practicing doesn't provide that kind of gratification. Practice, routine, inscription, rehearsal, etc. Take effort, discipline, and commitment. Buy it now, not so much. I think, and that's the thing, practice, once I'm in it, does give me massive amounts of fulfillment, but the idea of it doesn't, and sometimes, well, it does sometimes, but maybe the first 10 minutes doesn't, and definitely the rehearsal process doesn't. So it's going through a painful thing for long-term happiness, and what you're talking about there, for me, is the difference between pleasure and happiness. Pleasure is that short burst, which is important, but it doesn't provide any long-term gratification. Maybe a bit of that is really important, well, what provides a long-term gratification is the, the challenge of overcoming things, of achieving something, and that could be learning 
a trick that you're never going to show anybody, but you're just learning it for the sake of doing it. Autotelic experience, which is, if you look into flow, is according to Mihai Chikset Mihaly, or whatever you want to say, in the book Flow, The Science of Happiness, you know, talks about how important it is that we get those things to overcome. And, that, and magic fulfills so much of that and it's therefore very important for the happiness of many of us. Right, there you go. Uh, <laughs> to finish, I just wish I could see a magic ad that doesn't start imagine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that's from Bob Percy, lovely Bob, uh, mentalist. Right. Have a good one. I'm not online anymore, I don't think, but this is going to be uploaded. So sorry if you're watching this live and it, it isn't happening. Um, don't know what happened. Maybe the, the whole internet's gone down in my part of the country. But take care, everybody. Go and have a look at onlinemagic.co and uh, thanks loads.